so keeping in mind uh, the graduates so i'm going to present this uh, ppt today so uh, i think uh, rest others who are already in it uh, kindly bear with me for uh, five minutes just to give an introduction to the graduates so what is it and what actually happens in it so that uh, why i will present uh, those slides means uh, they will get an idea what happens in it so and they will find or they will understand the purpose of erp product and uh, they will get i mean my intention is they will get some understanding why they have to learn an erp product and uh, what is the career path on erp product so with this intention i am gonna introduce i mean tell them what happens in it so these are the uh, topics that we gonna cover today in our uh, this 45 minutes of session so i'll just take uh, uh, 30 35 minutes of time to cover all these topics and later on uh, happy to take uh, all of your questions and once they are sorted off then only we can end our today's demo session okay so kindly uh, give me some 30 minutes of time to cover these topics so my first topic is what is it i mean if uh, i mean if uh, i just want to have this session as an interactive session if someone would like to um, give their opinion or share their opinions i'm happy to receive from them so you can unmute yourself and you can uh, share your thoughts those who are working in uh, already working in it also so i mean don't tell me that it um, is nothing but information technology but tell me uh, uh, other than information technology what you know about it or else you can tell me what actually happens in it as well it industry i'm, I'm telling you so i'll just take, wait for 30 seconds of time to hear any sort of thoughts from anyone if not i'll move ahead okay fine so as everyone knows so it stands for information technology but uh, i feel it is necessary to understand what happens in it actually okay uh, and uh, whatever the thing that i am telling you is i feel that it will not be there in google uh, i'll just project you my view on it okay what actually happens in it industry so i feel the operations or uh, so called activities or things that are going in it industry will revolve around only two points the point point one is uh, using the information it industries will sell the technology okay i'll repeat again so in it in industry using the information it industry will sell the technology okay so what which information it industry will use and what sort of technology they will sell um, they will uh, sell so i feel uh, using the information here uh, relates to any sort of customers business requirements if someone i mean if company is awarded with a project so uh, the con if consultant uh, go to the customer premises and first of all the first task they will uh, uh, try to understand from the customer it what is their business okay what sort of i mean first they will understand what is their business and what are how they are uh, carrying out their operations and then they will go to the next sort of thing so using the information it industry will sell the technology so here technology refers to any sort of uh, software product now we are dealing with an erp product so using the information it industry uh, will sell the erp products okay and i'll the second way of operations that are being carried out in it is this one so uh, if you have this technology so with the technology that you have you can create the information whatever the information that was created you can store it and whatever the information that was stored you can retrieve it any at any point of time um, and then uh, uh, you can transfer the information as well if you have the technology in hand with you okay so these are the two operations primary or key operations whatever the operation that you take in it industry i feel that it will revolve around these two points only using the information it industry will sell the technology and using the technology it industry will uh, play with the data so playing means i feel it was creating storing retrieving and transmitting okay so i feel 
this is what the oper key operations that are being carried out in IT. Okay. So now uh, you got some brief idea what is IT about. So now I would um, like to present you about ERP as well. What is ERP? So ERP stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. <coughs> so uh, if you go and search in Google ERP, I mean, they obviously the first line that you can see is ERP is a software product or uh, something, something like that. But uh, I mean, I will not say that I will deny the Google definition, but in my point of view, I'll see ERP as uh, ERP will give a solution approach. What sort of solution approach it will give to under, I mean, ERP software or ERP will provide a solution approach by understanding and analyzing the business requires requirements of a particular organization and Consolidating all those requirements, ERP will provide a solution approach by bringing all the needs of all the departments in the company to a single platform. That platform itself, we call it as a ERP uh, software. Okay, so in uh, as we are discussing about Dynamics 365, we can consider ERP D365 as one of the ERP software or ERP product. Okay, so. Um, I'll just uh, uh, give some more information on this ERP because it is important because as you people are there in this uh, demo session because you want to learn some ERP pro uh, product which is Dynamics 365. So I feel it is important to know what is ERP with, this, with, so, with some sort of example. Okay, so whatever the definition that I told you know, so I'll just give you an example and then I'll come again with to the definition part. So let us assume any uh, automobile industry for example we will take automobile industry as an example uh, let's say we have uh, maruti suzuki as one of the uh, uh, leading uh, car manufacturers uh, in indian market so they will manufacture the their finished product called car and they will sell that car to their customers okay now consider the i mean considering this manufacturing of a car uh, what are the uh, departments that are involved in that car manufacture so obviously if it is car or something some other product so a company need some raw materials so that raw materials uh, need to be purchased from the suppliers who are available in the market so here uh, uh, as there is a term called purchasing they need a procurement team okay once they have purchased the raw materials they need to store those raw materials somewhere and uh, whenever there is a need they can go i mean any person can go and pick from the available uh, stock and that raw material can be utilized for production so uh, as there is involvement of item and uh, storing here we need a warehouse here i mean where i mean let us consider the place we are storing the inventory we call it as a warehouse and uh, we need we need a warehouse management process and we need a inventory management inventory is nothing but stock here so we need a inventory management process here so as there is an involvement of warehouse management and inventory management process we need some warehouse team and we need an uh, inventory department uh, uh, who can handle his as there is a movement of stock from supplier to uh, to the warehouse and from warehouse to the production floor or some production floor to the market area or from market area to the uh, customer place here uh, movement is there so it involves some logistic team so any organization uh, is depended on sales so for sales there should be a marketing zone team so there is an involvement of marketing department so sales department will be there so in each and every department as uh, human uh, resources are required so hr department will be there and as human resources are there obviously payroll department will be involved and uh, obviously it's a manufacturing company so production department will be there and so like this um, if you take the i mean as we have taken the example of car manufacturing there are multiple departments involved here so <clears throat> um, each and every department will have their own requirements and needs okay so 
we what ERP will do is ERP will consider all the needs that a department is having and it will provide a solution approach for that needs through a ERP software example so human resource team need some um, because whenever the employees are onboarded so whatever the work they have to do in the organization they should be provided some training then only uh, they can do their task easily so for uh, conducting a training uh, the basic things are they need some stationary items they need a whiteboard like that small small things are required let us assume no, don't go for a big things small small things what they have to do they have to raise a uh, request to the procurement team that uh, so and so training has to be conducted so we need a uh, these products so they will raise a requ internal requisition to get those products what procurement team will do they will scrutiny that requisition and they will uh, create a purchase order and get the stock available for that training to happen in the company so here the solution that uh, i mean in order to raise the requisition or in order to scrutiny that requisition or in order to raise that purchase order obviously if everyone should be uh, have visibility on what is going on then they need a software that software we are considering it as a erp product so erp product will provide such such solutions to meet the business needs um, business requirements or the needs every department is having so that's why i see a erp is nothing but a solution approach or uh, erp itself will provide a solution for the business needs okay so dynamics 365 is one such erp product and which is the leading um, uh, one of the leading uh, product in current market okay so i believe that i have given enough visibility on what is erp so so my next slide is about the software development life cycle why i am uh, why i have involved this slide means as you are uh, as you all people are attending the class today so you by this time you will have some visibility that uh, if i gonna learn this uh, product called dynamics 365 and trainer logistics functional area i will become a <laughs> cm uh, supply chain management trade and logistic consultant so you will become a functional consultant so okay so let's take any project in the uh, software industry these are the phases that we have in the software industry so now you being a functional consultant what is the task that you have to do in it industry so okay you have you have joined this course for about two months and you have learned dynamics 365 product but if you go into i mean i'm telling this uh, for the graduates if you go into an it industry what is the thing that you have to do so you should have some visibility uh, on uh, what are the project phases that we will have and which phase what should be the contribution from functional consultant side so that's why i have involved this slide because to i mean my intention is the person who is attending the demo will will or should get some clarity what is his or her role after uh, learning this dynamics 365 SCM trade and logistics train okay so as i have mentioned here so there will be six phases six key phases in the software development life cycle analysis design development testing deployment and maintenance so as a as you can see here i have mentioned the analysis and design part uh, in these two phases functional consultant will be involved and uh, <coughs> you see here uh, from development to deployment so here technical consultant will will be involved and in the testing phase uh, till the maintenance both functional and technical consultant will be involved so so if you see on all the phases there will be a role for functional consultant so in the analysis and the design phase what a functional consultant will do is uh, this functional consultant will go to the premises of the customer they will uh, functional consultant should understand the business process of the uh, client and uh, they have to understand why uh, what customer is expecting through this erp product what are their requirements and why uh, from the erp product so by knowing those requirements you need to map those requirements with the your erp product called d365 
okay and you need to prepare a design document by mapping those requirements and you should sit with technical consultant for developing those uh, scenarios and once the development is concerned completed functional consultant should test the scenarios with the uh, requirement that customer has given so once the testing is completed uh, it technical consultant will deploy the code to a uh, environment and once the project was went live so there will be a maintenance session if sort any sort of trainings or issues that the client is facing a customer functional consultant will be the first point of contact and he or she should be in a position of addressing all the queries that are raised by the customer or the client okay <clears throat> so as i told you that they i feel that there are uh, two verticals in it functional and technical so uh, the uh, the contribution from functional consultant and technical consultant together will make a project a successful one okay <clears throat> so now what is this microsoft dynamics 6 i have given you a brief understanding so far i have told you that microsoft dynamics 365 is a <coughs> microsoft dynamics 365 is an erp product so um what it is so basically we will just discuss about that so microsoft dynamics 365 so we call it as d365 f and o in short um, in short and um, it's an enterprise resource planning product and it was uh, um, it was by microsoft okay um, i have mentioned here microsoft dynamics 365 f and o designed to help the organization what sort of help it was doing so microsoft D dynamics 365 f and o will help the organizations any sort of organization it can be a manufacturing company or it can be a trading company um, trading company means i will define the trading company as where uh, the purchases and, and sales are being carried out we can consider that as a trading company as well so to streamline their operations and to enhance the customer engagement and uh, make data driven decisions improve efficiency and generate real time insights into their operations so forget all uh, these streamline their operations and have customer engagement it's a google definition kind of thing but i mean my view um, i'll tell you if Uh, in our olden days whenever the computers are not in existence as how it is today everything will goes on offline mode only and at that time based on the trust that was there on the uh, second individual so the operations are uh, operations went well now nowadays it is not the position okay so each an individual is in need of some software product to streamline their operations because now uh, the business has expanded in such a way i mean let's if we see the things in a positive way uh, each and every business uh, motive is to grow uh, grow and uh, to have the expansion as much as possible so a person sitting in us uh, should understand what's happening on the uh, production uh, floor in india so how it is possible so it is possible through dynamics 365 product so a person if ceo of the company is sitting in us so if he or she see uh, want to see what's happening in uh, uh, in the production area and how many how much sales are happening in india uh, company and uh, how many uh, how the deliveries are going on is the delivery going on on time or not and uh, how much uh, i mean how effectively the payment process are going to supplier and how effectively the sales team is um, uh, taking the receivable amount from the customers uh, in order to see all those operations by sitting in us itself they need a, a, a centralized product called uh, i name it as uh, yeah, an erp product and uh, as we are discussing about dynamics 365 yes uh, e dynamics 365 will provide all those kind of features now i'll tell you that any such uh, big organization why they want to go for an erp product means uh, to have the better uh, revenue outcome and to have a better financial outcome see everything starts with uh, getting profit only if somewhere 
any person feel that uh, some money that he or she is expecting is not coming as uh, they expected they saw i mean they may understand that some loopholes are there because of that they are not getting the finances as expected so in order to streamline their finances or in order to streamline their uh, uh, revenue outcomes what they have to do they have to do the streamlining process from the roots itself what are the roots to get the uh, better finances to streamline their operations what are those operations if it is a training company uh, purchases and sales transactions will be considered as their operations and uh, so they have to streamline their purchases and sales uh, first then only they can expect a difference in the financial outcomes so first of all they need to start streamlining their operations from the purchases and sales we uh, in this trade and logistics training we will discuss about the three key primary areas so these are the uh, three key primary areas purchases sales and inventory okay so in dynamics 365 so there are six modules which covers this trade and logistics functional area accounts payable and procurement and sourcing comes under the purchasing part inventory management and product information management comes under the uh, inventory part and accounts receivable and accounts sorry accounts receivable and sales and marketing comes under the sales part so our trade and logistics training is uh, uh, segregated into three areas purchases inventory and sales and these are the six modules that we gonna cover in our training and um, we have a curriculum for this and a um, visual path team will share the cur i mean by this time some of you may get that curriculum what is going to be covered or if you want to see the curriculum as well you can um, uh, take the help of visual path executive they will uh, provide you the training sheets now you may have a question uh, scm does scm covers only t and l part so scm is uh, can scm consists of three main areas trade and logistics uh, second one is advanced warehouse management and then uh, third one is uh, mass production so these are the three key key areas you come to learn all these three areas you will become an SEM expert okay so to become an SEM expert you have to start with trade and logistics because it is the uh, first one that you have to learn so I'm not saying that it is a basics one basic one but trade and logistics functional area itself is like a uh, huge uh, ocean can okay. you have uh, this that much of scenarios that much of key configurations available in dynamics 365 product but trade and logistic functional area will start from the basics of dynamics 365 application without learning the trade and logistic you can i mean uh, the understanding capability will be much 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 less if you directly go and learn this uh, production modules or uh, we have under production we have two modules master planning and uh, production control and advanced warehouse management so if you try to go for the uh, uh, i mean i call advanced warehouse management as level two and the master planning and uh, production control as level three so if you go to level two and level three so it will not be that much easy without uh, knowing the uh, trade and logistics functional area okay <clears throat> so this is all about and our i mean our uh, key areas are this purchases sales and inventory how uh, if we take the purchases functionality or purchases area how and to what extent microsoft dynamics 365 is providing the feasibility to carry out the operations and how far it is uh, providing the features to uh, cope up with the current market scenarios and current business scenarios uh, so those things and all we will uh, come to learn in this trade and logistics uh, training part and um, this training will last for a i mean uh, practically we have completed this trade and logistics uh, training in two months of span if uh, under a condition that uh, there will not be any breaks in between and of course based on the festivals that we will have we will get a offer uh, 
two to three days in the two months of span so we have a practical uh, uh, thing that we can we have completed this course in the span of two months monday to friday one hour session per day okay and uh, if some breaks are there uh, uh, so it be it may get maximum to maximum if uh, it will take uh, two months one week or uh, in a very uh, prolonged scenario it will take two uh, two months 15 days okay so this is the thing and uh, now uh, the another thing is what about uh, the application microsoft dynamics 365 application uh, because obviously if you are learning the product you should have some you should have the product with you to practice it because without practice you will not get anything um, as a human tendency in this two months of span whatever the curse that you learn you will you may remember it but you may remember it another two months but uh, based on the human tendency it is not possible uh, to remember it for the whole lifetime if there is no practice so you should have a dynamics 365 product in your uh, personal laptops so for that i'll uh, uh, i can share one number to you, you can get the product uh, installed in your laptops so he may tell you wha what sort of requirements uh, i mean requirements from your laptop set uh, it will be some 16 gb ram and 256 gb ssd so those sort of requirements um, will be there and uh, this i mean i'll share one contact that person may explain you uh, what are the requirements so uh, if anybody is having any questions i'm happy to take up those questions so i'm done with my uh, presentation so i'm happy to hear the questions from you so one of you mentioned i'm not hearing if anyone talking in case please confirm is it the case for everyone uh sir uh, one question for here uh, it yeah. is compulsory to uh, you have to know you have to know about the coding no okay. because i am a functional consultant and uh, uh, i have nine years experience so far now if someone i mean based on my experience if someone show me the code i can understand it 10 percent only but in order to i mean uh, to be a functional consultant it is not uh, there is no requirement that you have to learn coding and uh, you should have coding block and so no. okay, okay thank you thank you and gautam so i am worried that uh, have you heard anything uh, actually i joined from laptop it has some issue uh, that time i was not able to hear you now i joined through mobile starting like uh, half of the session was you know already done yeah i'm now i'm able to hear you i could you know okay. uh, if you have any queries about this uh, uh, tndl uh, training you can ask me and uh, uh, in order to go through the ppt as well uh, you, this recording session will be provided by visual path to you all you have to do is you have to make a call to them and ask for the uh, link for the recorded session so they will provide you for sure and for now if you have any questions i'm happy to take up those questions and answer you uh yes yeah. um uh, i'm new to this msd right so planning to switch to msd so is it better to switch with the uh, supply chain or fndo see uh, fndo is the name of the product Microsoft Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations is the name of the product. Okay. okay. In that there are key there are two key functional areas called supply chain management and finance. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, under supply chain management, trade and logistics, advanced warehouse management, and master planning and production control. If the if you are known about all these areas, you will become an XCM expert okay so there is an another stream called finance so where you will uh, exclusively uh, you will be taught on general ledger uh, accounts payable uh, finance part of accounts payable and accounts receivables uh, those things will be covered under the finance so uh, what i'm trying to say you here is 
FNO is the name of the product. Under FNO, SCM and Fine Arts are two verticals. So now you are into the vertical of SCM. And this training is exclusively about trade and logistics, which is under SCM. Okay. okay. Fine. Yeah. And uh, coming to the other thing, it's a good decision that you are going to uh, switch to this uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365. So it's I feel and I can tell you that it is a very good idea and uh, trade and logistics will uh, give you an understanding of the product starting from the basics. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And once you have uh, once you come to know about the trade and logistics functional area after these two months you can go to the uh, uh, next sort of trainings either you can go to if you want to become an expert uh, on SCM side so you can go to advanced warehouse management training and the production control training okay so or else if you want to have knowledge on finance as well you can uh, join for finance training as well okay mm -hmm. So what are the challenges in this uh, areas in supply chain like um I, like you I see when you the, come to developer side right so we'll be analysis coding and i'll be facing a lot of difficulties while coding and all right so recommend wise also okay but uh, i'm not sure how how the cm is uh, develop i mean uh, those uh, resources will be having challenges i'm not sure like what kind of a challenge they will be facing See, I see. Uh, I can analyze your question in this way. So, for me, interest and focus matters. I mean, if there is a focus, uh, I mean, you not, we can't uh, feel anything as a challenge there. Okay. So, I'll tell you my scenario when I'm coming to this Dynamics 365. So, like how I'm telling you now, some person has told me that. Uh, what is the role of a function consultant like that? Okay, so I myself analyzed me that to which uh, role I will be suitable. So, as you told you, the technical in require technical consultant required some coding language. So I can't do coding, and uh, my mind is not prepared for that. So uh, in this. Uh, Thing I have given a brief, brief about what a functional consultant will do. He will go to the customer premises and the customer consultant has to sit with the customer and they have to understand the business process. And uh, what after knowing the business requirements, they have to map those requirements with this Dynamics 365 product. So I enjoy that work, it means interacting <coughs> with the customer, knowing those business process and uh, configuring those requirements with my application. I enjoy those process. So if you feel uh, I did not feel this process as a challenge to me, okay, because I have some uh, required focus on that. So I feel and I say that a person having focus and who enjoy this work culture definitely may become the uh, TNL functional consultant. And uh, without, I mean, coming to these small, small day to day challenges. There will be no role in IT industry without having small, small challenges. So all I mean, the challenge I feel here is tuning our mind or uh, considering or picking the uh, right role which suits our mindset is the first thing that we have to work. That is the first challenge that we have to work. If that is done and if you feel that uh, trade and logistics and becoming a functional consultant, uh, is your motto then it's easy to go for you so did i answer your question in a proper way or mm -hmm. you are yeah. some more things from my end i'm happy to explain anything uh yeah yeah i got it yeah yeah so any other questions from anyone and the fee structure and when the uh, course will uh, yeah, hi Ram, please tell me. Yeah, Ram, please tell me. Yeah, I can hear you, Ram. Please tell me. Hello. Okay. I got a few questions uh, from my side. Uh, so mm -hmm. I just came to know recently. I'm actually having SAP background. Um, mm -hmm. I just came to know this uh, 
uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365, also the ERP uh, product, and also it will be uh, similar to SAP. Um, so if you say uh, finance and operations, so under this finance and operations, uh, is there any possibility that to uh, work with, I mean, uh, to work with the cross applications like uh, HR with uh, finance and operations and plant maintenance like uh, equipment with the finance operations and also uh, procurement with the uh, finance operations and also like invoicing with the uh, finance operations. Um, like you know, there is so many cross applications, right? It's a part of uh, the mother models also. Is there any uh, uh, chance that we're going to cover in this course? Okay. So in your question, so I feel again, this finance and operations, you consider that as a name of the product. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is right. And yeah. in this course, we are going to completely, uh, we will have a detailed understanding and learning on purchases, sales and inventory. Okay, so when okay. it comes to purchases, I will say it as a procurement that you told me. And yes, we will come to know about the invoicing part as well. And uh, we will mm -hmm. discuss about the sales quotations, purchase quotations, purchase requisitions, purchasing policies, signing limits, and everything, okay. and uh, tra trade agreements that we are having in the system. Uh, how, I mean, vendor trade agreements, customer trade agreements, all those things we will. Uh, uh, discuss in our uh, trade and logistics along the with that we will come to know about the quality management quarantine management oh, okay. and a little bit of warehouse management but financial basics only we will cover because uh, for any transaction to be completed in the system we need to have some basic financial setup in the system of course this will not be there in the curriculum that will be shared by visual path to you but i will cover the in my classes, I will cover the basic financial setup, but it's not an end-to-end -end finance thing I'm, uh, that will not be covered under the trade and L training, but basic financial setup, which is required for posting of a transaction, I can convey those details to you. Okay, so, and we will discuss okay. about the sales quotations, sales orders, sales returns, purchase returns. So all these okay. topics we will cover in our uh, training. And uh, okay. we will not cover about the, uh, um, uh, material planning, I mean, planning means it will come under the uh, master planning and the production control modules. So that part we will not cover in our uh, trading logistics. I mean, I'm just giving a transparent and uh, transparent and honest communication so that uh, so okay. you will not, uh, I, I mean, if, if transparent communication is provided to you, so then you will have the right option to choose based okay. on the requirement. So, but I just one thing I can, yeah, sorry. Yeah, please continue. No, no, I just went through some of the documents now. Um, mm -hmm. So, but in the, if you say real time, in this real mm -hmm. time, if, if there is any possibility uh, to work uh, this, I think uh, I, it looks like a finance and operation is the, uh, it's like a backbone and the remaining other models is going to be uh, surrounded by this finance and operation looks like. Because some of the F and O operations, uh, I mean, for every client, uh, they will definitely have uh, this finance and operations. Even if the client is uh, um, a CRM client, either it is a plant maintenance client or whatever, any client, any client, uh, uh, he can have his own application. But still, uh, if he is using Microsoft Dynamics, uh, I'm believing that uh, finance and operation is mandatory, right? That's what I'm. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm just confused here. So you are referring that word finance and operations as the name of the product or you are talking about the finance modules? Uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, thinking in the web in the modules only. Okay. Uh, uh, F&O is uh, actually, I'm thinking is a module. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm just my understanding. No, no. F&O is the... Uh, name of the application or name of the product. So I am just sharing my screen. Uh, so okay. I'll just uh, show you the Dynamics 365 application and I believe that it will answer your question. So is my screen visible to you? Yes, I can see. Please confirm once after my screen is visible. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Okay. 
so this is the microsoft dynamics 365 application and as okay. you, you i mean as you uh, told in your question so any sort of erp product will uh, um, deal about these purchases sales inventory yeah, yeah. Resources, payroll finances advanced warehousing and uh, okay. master planning and production control all these things will be there all these verticals will be there so now okay if you see here finance and operations is the name of the product okay okay is the name of the product so that's why here it was mentioned as finance and okay. operations now if you see here these are the modules that we have under the finance and operations okay okay so in these modules we are going to cover six modules okay, okay so we're considering the curriculum that visual path has shared you so that six okay. modules will be under trade and logistics functional area we are going to cover accounts payable procurement and sourcing which are related to purchases sales and marketing and accounts visible which are related to sales inventory management and product information management which is related to the inventory management part and uh, along okay. with the six modules we are going to cover three other modules called general ledger for doing our basic financial setup and uh, we will discuss about system administration and organization administration two other modules uh, okay. in order to carry out our operations and all what is the basic setup that we need in the system we will do that in those two modules so total we will touch uh, nine modules in our uh, oh. t class oh, okay, okay i got it now so but i thought maybe will, everything but we will no i thought clearly you... Cover yeah, the topics of purchases, sales, and inventory. What are the topics oh, okay. that we have under purchases, sales, and inventory? So we will cover all those uh, scenarios and topics that are available in Dynamics 365. Whatever the, I mean, maybe here today or tomorrow, if you ask the Visual Path, they will share you a four pages detailed curriculum. So all those uh, topics will be under the purchases, sales, and inventory. Okay. Clear now? Yeah, I'm clear now. So, uh, like, uh, if you say uh, plant maintenance and uh, asset management, all those ones will not be part of this. Uh, this under this uh, trade and logistics, those two yeah. areas will not be covered. Yeah. Like uh, assets and. Uh, uh, no, asset management module will not be covered under this uh, triangle triangle oh. training classes. Yeah and uh, you this product i mean uh, plant maintenance and all uh, will be covered under the production control uh, there will be a separate sort of course for that so oh, okay. that course it will be covered so there will be three different courses as well for uh, scm also one is this tndl and the second one is for exclusively for advanced warehouse management there will be a course and for master planning and production control there will be a course and asset management okay. In the recent time only it, it, it came into existence and i have not seen uh, uh, the classes or courses are being taken out in the market for asset management module yeah I understand. so like a customer vendor also we are not going to cover right here customer vendor means uh, like a, like workers customers vendors uh, See, They're customers, vendors, without, without vendor, there is no purchase transaction. Without customer, there is yeah. no sales transaction. Oh, okay. So we are okay. going to cover the setups and configure key configurations and setups that are available in vendor and customer. We will come to know those because we have a exclusively uh, exclusive concept of intercompany orders where we need to understand and learn the configurations that are available in vendor master and customer master. So those things will be covered in that but uh, okay. i mean if you are thinking that there will be a separate module for customer and vendor no okay so yeah, now if but I'm... customer related topics and vendor related topics you will get a idea i mean okay. even those topics will be there in this tndl okay. so if i'm starting this uh, microsoft dynamic 365 uh, is this this module uh, this application is going to be the first application uh, is it going to be a foundation for me uh, is there is there anything i have to learn before i start this see uh, you have to choose either scm function scm area or finance area okay 
so okay. if you choose the SCM area, this TNL will be the foundation course, and then you can okay. uh, learn advanced warehouse management and uh, master planning and production control. These are the two other uh, courses that we have. If you are well versed with all these three topics, you will become an SCM expert. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now I got it. Thank you. So any other questions from anyone? Uh, what are the timings for the course? Uh, it will be uh, decided by the visual path only. So, uh, based on the, I mean, majority of the students uh, prefer what timing they will. Uh, uh, I mean, this is the demo session, right? So, they will approach you after this demo session. So, and they will take you the your preferred timing, and then the timing will be decided by the visual path. Based on the, okay. I mean, they will. Uh, take the opinion from all the students and they will fix the timing okay thank you and, uh, yeah and uh, as far as the communication that i had it will be 8 30 pm ist okay thank you uh, sorry sir again i have one more question um yes are the other uh, courses that you are saying are you also going to take the, are you also the trainer for that or is there any other trainer Mm, there are other trends with visual path. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you. So any other questions from anyone? Varun, Sandhya, Adnan, Sindhu. Yeah, I think uh, um, everyone is good so far what has been demonstrated. So, but still, uh, if you have any questions and uh, if you would like to get clarified from me, so if you get in touch with uh, visual path executive uh, they will have i mean they will connect an in uh, conference call uh, with me so we can have the discussion and we can have uh, the clarifications okay so see you all in the class okay bye and i wish you all the very best